In this exercise, we're going to see how to use an array to tell us the distribution of the set of numbers stored in another array. And we're going to do that by generating a set of random numbers in the first array. And then in the second array, every time we come across a number in the first array, we're going to increment that element's index by 1. So for example, in the first array, if we come across the number 12, then in the second array, what we're going to call the distribution array, at index position 12, we're going to increment a counter by 1. Actually, we don't have to increment anything but the element itself. And then if we come across another occurrence of 12 in the first array, then we'll increment the number 12 in the second array again so that then the occurrence is 2. That may seem a little fuzzy. It'll be clear once you see the example. So let's get started. I want to make sure I have enough room, so I'm going to set the size to 101. So the size variable is 101. Then we're going to declare our first array. That's the numbers that we're going to store. Then we're going to create a second array called distribution. That's going to store the occurrences of numbers in the first array. Now we need to create a random number generator, so we'll do that. Now we're ready to create the first array of numbers. So number sub i is equal to rand next int. And we'll use the um, formula we used in the last lesson. So the maximum value we want is 100 minus the minimum value is 1 plus 1 plus the minimum value of 1. So that will generate our random numbers into the numbers array. Now we're ready to count the occurrences, so here's how that works. We're going to loop from 0 through the size of the array, and then we're going to increment an array element's position based on what number we come across in the numbers array. So you see what we're doing here. So again, if the number is 12, then the index position will be 12, and it will be incremented by 1. Because it's an integer array, those values are initially set to 0. So then I can increment it by 1 just by using the increment operator. So every time I come across a number in the numbers array, I'm going to increment that position in the distribution array by 1. And then when we're finished, we can print out a list of the distribution. System out, print line, number, i, occurs, and here's the distribution access, and then times. I see one thing we can do. Because the number 0 is not going to come up, we can go ahead and start at position 1. Line my code up a little bit better. All right, let's give it a shot. Save. And let's compile. All right, so then we can come through here and we'll scroll back up. So number one occurred zero times. Number two occurs one time. Number three occurs two times. So one thing we might do, although it's going to make our output a little messy, is we might display each element of the array first. So let's give that a shot. Just need another loop. Now would be a good time to have some methods, but I didn't want to confuse the issue. We'll use the i plus 1 mod 10 method again. And actually, that needs to come second. So before that, we'll write system out print numbers sub i plus a space, like so. This is about the limit of code you could write without putting this into methods, but again, I don't want to confuse things by having method definitions. I just want to show you the techniques of using arrays, and then you can figure out yourself when you can use these in methods and when it's not necessary. Let's clear the screen. Let's compile again. 
And again, it'll be hard to tell. So we said the number two occurs two times. Notice I forgot to put a system out print line, but that's okay. Take a look. I see one, two, and I see two twos. Number three occurs three times. Let's take a look. And I see there's one, two, and there's three. Okay. The number four occurs one time. There's the only occurrence of number four that I see. So I'm going to have to assume that it works correctly. So you see what we're doing is we're just using the array as a way to store occurrences of a number by taking advantage of the fact that we can put a number as an index position into the array. So it's just kind of a clever use of arrays, but this is how data structures can be of help to you in your programming, is figuring out how to have the right data structure to solve the problem that I'm trying to solve. In this case, I'm trying to count occurrences of a number so it makes sense to use the array index as the number and then increment that element. Starts out at zero, the first occurrence becomes one, then when we see another occurrence it becomes two, and so on and so forth. Now in the next exercise, we're going to see how to take this distribution and create a histogram or a bar chart from the data that we've stored.